everyone. What's up? It's Mike Wall, and welcome to the Agent Revolution podcast, where we deconstruct some of the biggest challenges facing today's real estate agent. Today, I'm super excited. I've got the social media princess slash queen on the line, and uh, we're getting ready to drop some knowledge for you. Um, we're going to talk about dominating your market through social media, and um, there's no better person to talk about this than my girl Gogo here, who I got an opportunity to meet down at the Cincinnati Mastermind for the Kentucky Derby, and we had a lot of fun, and we learned a lot, and, uh, and I'm super excited to have you on, so welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So um, let's dig right in because we're going to try to get this done in about 15 minutes or less. And uh, this should be a nice after lunch treat for most of you agents out there. So if we're digging right in, um, let, let's we know that that the heartbeat of any business is leads. Right. And it doesn't matter whether it's buyers and sellers or agents. Right. We all broker business business owners or brokerages. They need agents and agents need buyers and sellers. Right. And we know one channel of getting buyers and sellers uh, and agents for that matter is making phone calls, right? And that's a grind, right? Cold calling. Um, most agents want to do anything me, they can to avoid cold calling, right? Ask me how many times I cold called in my career. Okay, you ready? Go, yeah. go. How many times have you cold called in your career? Big, fat, zero. Okay, so you, you, you just got a lot of people really excited. Cause they now they're thinking I don't have to pick up the phone anymore. And I'm getting no, ready to I can't do it. It's against my religion. I literally, I, I joke about this all the time and I say, I'd rather take a night shift at Taco Bell, but I really rather take a night shift at Taco Bell. I cannot do that. I cannot beg for business. I cannot talk uh, or talk to strangers about who am I, what I do for a living. I feel like I truly believe that it is their um, blessing if they get to work with me. So for me to be begging for their business is just, it does not feel right. Right. I can't do it. So your most most of most of your clientele, uh, whether it be buyers or sellers or agents, are contacting you through your social media, right? Every single one of them, yeah. Okay, so that that's really exciting. So that's what I want to dig into. Okay, so yeah. just really quick, um, give us a quick bio on you, your, your real estate bio. How did you get into real estate? How long have you been in real estate? Sure. So when I was born, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not going to go back that far, but I am originally from Romania. I'm Hungarian by nationality. And I moved here when I was 21. I did the corporate America route for the longest time. Then I was a stay-at-home mom for a little while. Realized that that's not for me. I really like to use my brain. I like to put makeup on, leave the house, feel like I'm contributing to this family. And I also value myself in how much money I make. And that is not a good way of living life by any means. But if that's who you are, you need to please yourself and make sure you're happy with yourself. I had to make money. So I had to figure out a way, how can I do that? but stay as a mom still. So I can still drop them off every morning and pick them up every afternoon and be home for the games and all that. So my neighbor came to me at the time and she said, Gogo, you're so social. You have so many friends. You would make an awesome realtor. Why don't you, oh, hi, Mike. Um, why don't you become a realtor? And she goes, I already went and talked to the broker and all you need to do is go and interview. So I did. I interviewed with them. I was not a licensed agent yet. They said, if I get my license, they will pay for it. Um, I, the company at the time was called Real Estate One. They were my motherland and uh, they were awesome to me. I stayed with them for six and a half years. Last year, um, through the years, I got recruited all the time. Nobody really could get to me because I had it really, really good at Real Estate One. My cup, uh, my cap and cut were was just amazing. So nobody could touch that. Then KW came to me February of last year and them having um, profit share, there was something that Real Estate One was not able to give me. So then I switched over to KW February of last year. And then um, when you get a taste of <laughs> profit share, then revenue share gets to you, then you're like, okay, now we're talking pennies to the dollar. So let me switch again. So November 1st of last year, I switched again for two reasons, ref share and stocks that again, real estate one, nor KW was able to give me at the time. Okay. So you're at EXP now. And yeah. um, so, you know, and you're crushing it, by the way, she's up in Michigan. You're in the Ann Arbor area of Michigan? I'm actually in the boonies. Okay. Yeah. So, so not about 30 minutes north from Ann Arbor. Okay, and you run a team, right? Well, yes and no. I, I run what I call a team go, go but that is an EXP team. So I have over 40-some agents now in 30-some states. Okay. Um, but it's not a local team as then most teams are structured. Um, the way I run my teams is that every lead I send them is a 50-50 split, but everything they work on, they generate it on their own, is 100% theirs to keep. Okay. And do you teach them your social media strategy? Yeah, so I have Gogo's Bootcamp. Um, it's open for the general public at gogosbootcamp.com. 
or uh, everybody on my team gets me, my teaching, my coaching, my mentoring, and all the boot camps for free. Okay. Wow. All right. That's awesome. And I'll post the link to that um, at the end of the show. Thank so you. real quickly then, talk about what social media channels you're using right now effectively. So the ones that I use all of them pretty much. So I I don't snap. Uh, I use Snapchat to take silly videos and I post it on Instagram. But other than that, I don't snap. So I use Instagram mostly. My I run everything off of paid. So I don't mix personal with business um, for many reasons. I know many, many agents do it on their personal because that is your biggest platform, the biggest reach you have to your peeps. Um, I don't want to do that because um, that's my platform to keep in touch with my family at home. So I don't mix the two together because I don't want to shove down on my friend's throat that I'm a realtor every two seconds of the day. And I also my parents won't understand the word of it. My parents don't speak English. So for them to see all of my English posts and real estate related, it's really not they didn't sign up for that. So I separate the two. So run, I run everything that is work related or real estate related off of business pages. So I have an Instagram page that's GoGo's Real Estate. I have a Facebook page that GoGo's Real Estate, and on, Inst- on LinkedIn, I am GoGo Bethke since you have to be on there on, by your real name. Yeah. Um, so LinkedIn is an awesome platform to use and abuse. Um, they are allowing you to have a much bigger reach than any of the other websites or any of the other platforms. Um, some of my videos on LinkedIn are over a hundred thousand views and I, I don't pay for any of the, I don't also advertise. So all of the things that we are talking about here, it's pretty much for free. I don't advertise. So all of my leads also come for free. I don't pay. Wow. Okay. All right. So I know everybody's asking themselves this question in their head because I know I am. It's like, what are you posting on the different channels? So like, are you posting the same content across all social media channels? Or are you just posting? No. Okay. No. So you have to uh, spend some time on these platforms to figure out where you fit in and also what's working and what's not working on those platforms. I'm not asking you to change your personality. I'm pretty much go-go and I stick with it. Um, you get what you what you see pretty much in real life versus on social media. It doesn't matter. But the platforms are different from one another. So we're on Instagram. I pretty much posted my outfit today and I and I said that I'm fighting the idea of being closer to 40 and I, and I dress and look like I'm 22. Uh, I couldn't do that on LinkedIn. You know, I mean, that's that's fine for Instagram. And also it wouldn't work really well on a business page on Facebook. So you just kind of have to figure out where it fits in. Your crowd on Instagram is more of that millennial, younger crowd. You can kind of get away with anything. Uh, Facebook page is more of a professional platform. So that's where you're going to see my newest listing. We have a price reduction. I got featured in a magazine. Here's the podcast that I'm going live on today. That kind of stuff goes on um, Facebook. And then LinkedIn is just kind of that little bit of that boring business inspirational this is my achievement i just got this this month Mm -hmm. you know kind of that um soft bragging yeah so i'm curious about this because i know a lot of um i know a lot of real estate agents they don't post or do video because um they're scared of what other people think quite honestly and and it's an epidemic so here's my two cents about that as soon as somebody's opinion about me is going to pay my mortgage, I'm going to care about their opinion. <laughs> I, that, did that explain it to you, how I really feel about it? Yeah. I don't give a funny rabbit what people think. I love it. I love it. Not I love unless it. their opinion cuts me a check. So your, so your social media, your strategy is different on Instagram. It's different on Facebook. And it's different on LinkedIn because but of the different the audience. Same. It's different of what I post, but on all of them, I, I market me. And I mm-hmm. think that's where most agents go wrong. They okay. are not in their own photos. It's the next house they just listed. It's the last closing they had. It's the this and the that. And here's the problem. When you do that, that house, yeah, everybody's happy. Congratulations, you sold it. I do that too. But the problem is if they don't know you and they don't follow you already, then they don't know who sold that house. And the end of the day, what you, what the reason why you're doing it is because you want that face recognition. You want that brand recognition. So then next time the neighbor wants to sell a house, they remember, oh, that go-go chick, that's the, the, the girl on Facebook, that's the one who sold it. You want them to know who sold it because you want them to find you when they're ready to sell. Yeah. And if you don't market you, if you are not your business, you don't have a business. Right. Then so you have how, to buy leads. How, Gogo, how often are you posting? Uh, last seven years, about 38,600 times. There's a video on my Instagram you can watch. <laughs> Okay. I'm at home in a pink t-shirt, like a pink or like a neon pink t-shirt. It's a IGTV video. It explains it because I have so many of you reach out to me being like, oh my gosh, I posted and I'm sitting here waiting for the leads and they're not coming in. What did I do wrong? 
it doesn't work like that. Yeah. It's like, you have to understand, I've been doing this for seven years. In the seven years, literally, in average, I posted 14 times a day. Now, that is a bunch of 15-second uh, live or whatever they call them, um, story videos, but it is still 15 times a day. Mm -hmm. And the way I look at it, people are like, when do you have time for that? Do, do, does any of us, show me one realtor that leaves the house without this. Yeah. This is my videographer. This is my editor. This is my business. This is my office, my scanner, my, my you name it. This is my office right here, my cell yeah. phone. So is it a long-term play? Like if you're going to get involved oh, in absolutely. social media. There is not it? an overnight success. I mean, everybody who follows me now is like, oh my gosh, she has 30,000 or however many thousand followers. But it took me seven years. You, you didn't follow me seven years ago when I had 200. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's a long term strategy, everything is. So just you have to figure out of like, what is your cup of tea? What makes you feel like I don't work? And don't get yeah. me wrong. If you follow me, you realize I'm scheduled down to the minute every single day. So right. I do work. There's a lot of things that I do do, but it doesn't feel like work yeah. because I get to do what I love. So, so if I was to figure out idiot. what that thing is that you love, you don't work a day in your life. Yeah. I love that quote, by the way. So are you like, if, if I was a brand new agent, just getting ready to, to get into social media, what would you encourage me to do? Um, incur this is how I started. I get agents all the time. It's like, well, I'm new or I'm newer and I don't really have all these transactions. I really don't have all this going on. Then post about what it takes to be a realtor. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. I posted about, I'm at an open house. Um, what is this in the basement? Or, oh my gosh, my clients want to make an offer. Now what? I remember the first time I showed the houses and they were like, I think this is it. And I was like, shit, excuse my French. No, um, how, how do I make an offer? You know what I mean? So then you would post about, oh my gosh, I just saw the first house and I seriously don't know how to make an offer. So what do I do? Call my broker? Do I go online? Do I Google it? Do I watch a video? Do I go on YouTube? Like whatever it takes to be a realtor is what you need to post about. Because when people see your hustle and they see how hungry you are and they see that you're going to do whatever it's going to take and you're not going to be into in that 80% average that falls out in the first year of real estate, then they're going to choose you down on the road when they're ready to buy or sell. Right. So, so just post of what it takes, what you learned today. That's one of the best things when you're a newer agent. What did you learn today? Right. Tell, tell the audience what not to do. Tell what, what is a, what, what do they not want to do on social media? You don't want to mix business with personal. I don't want to see your kids. I have kids too. I don't barely ever post them there. Don't mix the two together. I know many of them want to keep their personal accounts to use it for Instagram business because that's where their pool of people are. So they feel like if I switch over to a page then I'm going to lose them. So then I'm starting from zero. But you don't want to shove down on your friend's throat that you're a realtor. They might already have one. You know what I mean? And you also don't want to force them into a, a business relationship. Right. So in my opinion, it's very, very important to start from fast. Whatever is business is business. Whatever is personal is personal. And then just be you. I mean, even though you're on your business page, but show your business side. If you ever took a disc assessment, you realize that on my personal page, I'm almost a totally different person than I am on my business page. Okay. You know what I mean? Because I am a different personality, me men mentality-wise, in business than I am at home. My At home, my husband also is a very high D&I personality. So we would butt heads if one of us didn't chill a pill, you know, took a chill pill. And that's how I am. At home, I am way more mellow. So on my personal side, you're not going to see a lot of the inspirational stuff, a lot of the hustle, a lot of the that. Because in my home life, I'm... My whole life is not, it's not about that. Right. So then on the business page, you can truly be business. Okay. So you've created, you created like this persona now that like, it's, it's separate from who you are as a, as a, like just as a human being at home, but like, it's a purely everybody. What, what's really cool about your strategy is you've attracted the people that you've attracted through the person that you are in business. And that's exactly what you wanted to do. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because it's, I get to, how do I say that? The people that do know me personally, they know that I can be silly. They know that I sleep on their couch by eight o'clock. They know that I don't drink. They know I don't use drugs. They know all that about me. But if you see me in person, in the office setting, I'm a total, how do I say that? Can I say asshole? Yeah. 
Okay, so I'm a total you asshole. Say whatever you want. Different... <laughs> I'm a totally different ball of game when it comes to work. So okay. if you pers- if you separate the two, then you are able to live your full life in that content of being you at work or being you at home, and you don't feel like you have to change that personality. And and don't get don't don't get like um, I'm not trying to say that I'm a, I have a bipolar personality and I'm totally different. But I'm just saying that if you truly took a disc assessment, you realize who you are at work and who you are at home. And you'll see that it's a totally different personality. So in able to be able to live your fullest life yeah. in both worlds, you can if you separate it, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, I know we're up against the clock here. Hey, Gogo, how can people, if, if people, and by the way, you, by, we, did, we just dropped some, some knowledge here and, and, and shared with you how to dominate your market through social media in about 15 minutes. How can people connect with you if they want to learn more about your social media strategy or if they want to learn more about, you know, how to join EXP or just how to build a business? Yeah, the best is Gogo's um, Gogo's Real Estate on Instagram, probably, because that feeds to all of my other platforms. So that is probably uh, the best way for them to get a hold of me. And also, they can go through it and, and read it and see the stuff I have been doing. And I have zero problem if you copy it. Now, by copying, I mean, take your own selfie and you can post something along the subject that I posted. Don't literally take it word for word. If you take it word for word, give me credit. I don't mind that. Yeah. I do have people like <laughs> screenshotting what I said or typing what I said and just putting their photo sure. and not giving credit for that. Now that, that is different. But if you just want to take my strategy and make it your own, you are more than happy to do that. I'm happy to help anybody because I feel like this is such a wonderful industry without having the ceiling. We can all be ourselves and go for the moons and the stars. Yeah. If I'm able to help anybody with that, it's not like I hold the key to anything. To be honest with you, I had $6 to my name when I started social media. The reason I started it is because I didn't have a $40,000 marketing budget that most of the top producing agents had in the office where I joined. So I had to figure out a way how to do it for free. Yeah. And that's how social media came about. And then because I was kind of forced into figuring out because I didn't have money to throw at it, now I became an expert at it. But it's not something that I sat down one day and I said, oh, I'm going to be a social media queen one day. Yeah. It just happened to be like that. So if I can help anybody with anything, you'll find me on Gogo's Real Estate. The best way to to learn the basics is probably to purchase the Gogo's Bootcamp. It is gogosbootcamp.com. It's $49, guys. It's, <laughs> that's not what I'm going to get rich off of. But I created it so I don't have to repeat myself with the basic information sure. about social media. Gogo, thank you so much. Um, thank you for being a part of the show. I just love sharing these stories week after week because I know EXP is literally changing agents' financial lives. Oh my God, I can't even, I know we're not supposed to talk about financials and I'm not going to mention numbers, but I can tell you that EXP has been everything that they promised to be and then some. That's great. And I worked at brokerages where they like give you, you know, the star in the moons on paper. And then when you go into the nitty gritty, it was like, oh, okay, so there's another 2% here and then there's $49 there and then there's this and then you never get your money back. I mean, there's no options for SAG. There's no options for ref share. There's no options of getting your cap back with any other brokerage than I know of where I've worked in the past. So EXP by far has been wonderful and as it is the future of real estate. I think everybody needs to just uh, buckle up and get on the boat where it's... Um, they might be sailing and everything else is sinking. I told everybody at our meeting this morning, I said, everybody's coming. It's just a, matter of, coming. It's just a matter of when. When are they going to come and who are they going to come through? So they might as well come through you. I agree. I would love them on Team GoGo. <laughs> <laughs> well, GoGo, thanks again. And as always, if you know someone who might enjoy the podcast, please share it with them. And if you like the podcast, please go to wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe. If you want to learn more about EXP, and why it's the fastest growing real estate company in the country, or you're just interested in growing your business, head on over to explodingwealth.com. And if you want to jump on a call with me one-on-one, learn more about my business, go to meetmikewall.com. And that's it for this one. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, Gogo. Bye. Bye. Have a wonderful day.